Hi, welcome to Simpli Rad. Today, we will cover CNS lymphoma. CNS lymphoma can be primary or secondary. Primary means you have no evidence of systemic lymphoma to explain the brain findings. Primary CNS lymphoma occurs in three subsets of patients. You have post-transplant patients or those with immune deficiency. Immune deficiency can either be congenital or acquired, such as in HIV AIDS. Primary CNS lymphoma presents with parenchymal lesions in about 100% of cases, while secondary CNS lymphoma presents with leptomeningeal or dural abnormalities. In secondary CNS lymphoma, there may be involvement of parenchyma, but it is rare to have parenchymal lesions in the absence of meningeal involvement. That's the first key concept. The second concept is that in the traditional view, the brain does not have lymphatics. So, how then did the lymphoma cells get there? It is still debated, and actually, there is a theory that states that the brain does have a lymphatic system called the glymphatic system, and it courses adjacent to the blood vessels. In our references, it is accepted that lymphoma follows a pattern or has neurotropism for the microvessels. This explains the predisposition of the masses and the subependymal, perivascular, and deep gray matter. So, if you think about the microvessels in terms of the drainage pathway, you have confluence here in the periventricular region. It then drains into the subependymal draining veins. This example shows subependymal spread. The next key concept is that lymphoma cells are hypercellular. So if you have hypercellularity, you have restricted diffusion on MRI. This example shows a bright signal on DWI study. Another characteristic finding is that when you look at lymphoma cells under a microscope, they are small, round cells. Meaning, if you look at the lymphoma cell, much of the mass is composed of the nucleus instead of the cytoplasm. This is what we call a high nuclear to cytoplasm ratio. If you have little intracellular water, which is mainly in the cytoplasm, there will be a T2 hypo intense lesion. This example shows a iso, an iso to hypo intense lesion on T2. This is much different from other lesions or masses which have increased water content, explaining the T2 hyper intense signal. Also, because of this hypercellularity, increased density and compact configuration, you have hyperdense appearance on CT. Lymphoma also has the capacity to disrupt the blood-brain barrier. Because of this disruption, the contrast is now able to enter the brain and produce enhancement on CT and MRI. Here, we have enhancing masses in the periventricular region. This pattern of enhancement is different in persons with AIDS. It has been found out that in these patients, lesions have a higher mitotic activity and is more likely to be associated with the Epstein-Barr virus. This higher mitotic activity explains why the mass tends to outgrow its blood supply, hence becoming more necrotic. So, instead of a solid mass which enhances, this example shows that there is peripheral enhancement due to central necrosis. Lastly, another characteristic of CNS lymphoma is that there is little edema relative to the size of a mass. This is in contrast with metastatic lesions, which tend to have a greater degree of edema. So, 
Today, we went through the difference between primary and secondary CNS lymphoma. We also explained why the peculiar location of primary CNS lymphoma and also briefly tackled the imaging pathology as it correlates with the imaging appearance. Thank you very much and I hope to see you next time.